Uh, good morning. Can I uh, welcome everybody to the 18th meeting of the Education and Culture Committee in 2014? Can I remind everybody, as I always do, that uh, all electronic devices should be switched off because they do interfere with the broadcasting system. Um, uh, before I begin this morning, can I just point out that uh, we are joined this morning by Liz Smith, so welcome Liz, um, and also that uh, Joe McAlpine is substituting for Gordon MacDonald this morning, who is unable to join us. Um, Minister, before we start, can I, from the from the press reports this morning, can I just offer uh, the committee's congratulations? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, on a personal level as well as on a, a committee you level. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you very, very nice much. news. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Uh, the first item on our agenda uh, this morning is to take evidence on the provision of early learning and childcare specified children Scotland order 2014. Can I welcome to the committee Aileen Campbell, the Minister for Children and Young People, and her supporting officials from the Scottish Government. After we have taken evidence on the instrument, we will debate the motion in the name of the Minister. Officials are not permitted to contribute to the formal debate, uh, but therefore can I begin by inviting the Minister to make any opening remarks. Thank you, uh, Convener. Yes, uh, so I wanted to take a few minutes to outline the provision of early learning and childcare to specify children's Scotland Order 2014, which is subject to affirmative procedure here today. Now, the purpose of this instrument is to, to define those eligible preschool children under 47.2 of the Children and Young People Act who are entitled to the mandatory amount of early learning and childcare. Those children are defined as three and four-year-olds starting from the first term after their third birthday and two-year-olds with a parent in receipt of out-of-work benefits starting from the first term after their second birthday or the first term after their parents start receiving out-of-work benefits as specified in the instrument. And this will come into force for three and four year olds from August 2014, except for the two year olds with a parent in receipt of qualifying benefits, which will come into legal force from the 31st of October. Now, we've been working very closely with COSLA and local authorities and all key delivery partners to ensure our ambitious timescale of August is met. Our shared assessment of local authority progress with COSLA is that every local authority has plans in place and is in a very strong position to deliver from August reflecting considerable momentum and effort, which will continue apace through the start of the autumn term. We've laid an amended order to make sure the introduction of this provision is more effective with a period until the 31st of October to resolve any outstanding issues around the margins and to ensure that requests for places are met and high quality. We and COSLA are absolutely clear that we fully expect introduction of this provision from the start of the autumn term. We've made that commitment and we know that parents will have that expectation. Some local authorities have already informed their local populations to that effect. And we've funded the provision on that basis and we will increase information and publicity over the next few weeks on the basis of an August start. We will continue to work very closely with all key delivery partners to support plans and progress towards implementation. And in addition to the revenue and initial capital allocations, we have laid an order subject to negative procedure to suspend temporarily the requirements under the Schools Consultation Scotland Act 2010 on local authorities to consult on establishing new early learning and childcare provision which will come into force on the 28th of June. We have drafted and engaged widely on a statutory guidance on the early learning and childcare provisions. We have drafted and engaged widely on national guidance on the concept of early learning and childcare to support good practice in delivery. We have appointed a consultant to work one-to-one -one with local authorities and with groups of local authorities to address key challenges such as the particular challenges that arise for local authorities. And we have also provided an additional three and a half million to expand and develop the early learning and childcare workforce, including training and CPD for new and existing staff. The stopping dates and transitional arrangements for starting primary school will continue as they currently operate. While all children who turn five from March before to the February after the autumn term, in between those dates when they can start school, those with a birthday in January or February will be entitled to an additional year of early learning and childcare if their parents chooses to wait to the August after their fifth birthday. For others where parents choose to defer, local authorities have a discretionary power to provide an additional year of early learning and childcare, which would be based on assessment of wellbeing and need. So, to conclude, uh, convener. The instrument therefore reflects our priorities to ensure that expansion of early learning and childcare to wider cohorts of children is manageable, is sustainable and of high quality. It focuses on those children who are most vulnerable in the first instance with additional opportunities to remove barriers to work for parents or create wider opportunities to engage with parents through employment 
or family support. It also reflects the wide consensus and desire identified through the passage of the bill to expand entitlement to more vulnerable two-year-olds than most vulnerable specified in the Act. So I hope that uh, covers the, the gist of what we're doing with this order and happy, of course, to take questions, which I'm sure the committee will have. Uh, can I thank you very much, Minister, for that. Um, I, I can I invite min members to indicate uh, if there are any questions they wish to put to the Minister. Before I come to that, can I inform the committee that the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee met this morning to examining, examine this uh, order and they had nothing to report to the Parliament. So it's just for the record that they met this morning and had nothing to report. Um, can I begin uh, the questioning with Mary? Um, uh, can I just uh, ask the Minister, how many of the uh, cohort of 3,440 uh, eligible two-year-olds will be guaranteed a place in August? Well, the provision is, is, is set out for children who want to, and for families who want to take that entitlement to, to do so. But what we do know from local authorities and through our joint work and our uh, engagement with local authorities and our joint assessment is that all local authorities have plans in place to, to cater for um, the children who are part of this expanded uh, cohort and are working very hard to deliver from August. Maybe if I could put it in another way, um, you did say in your opening statement uh, that local authorities are in a very strong position to deliver and they're looking to resolve any outstanding issues uh, around the margins. Um, so can I ask how many local authorities will be delivering uh, childcare for two-year-olds in August and how many will be waiting until November? Again, you know, what, I, what I said is what we know is that all local authorities, through our joint assessment, have plans in place to deliver for the new provision for eligible two-year-olds in August. And that was made clear in the joint statement that we uh, released uh, last week. Now, the reason why we have you know, cause to believe that there may be issues around the margins, for, it, for example, is that maybe um, there could be a family move into another local authority and that is a, is a new uh, family with two-year-olds that will need to have have cover. So it's these, for these reasons, these unintended uh, and unforeseen issues that local authorities may have to grapple with, that we want to make sure that there is maximum flexibility to allow and support local authorities to deliver uh, for those for those two-year-olds. But what we know from the joint assessment is that all local authorities have plans in place for the two-year-olds that are eligible. Uh, just my final question. I'm, uh, I'm not sure I'm... Uh, maybe not asking as clearly, but I'm not quite getting the, the clear reasons for uh, postponing the implementation of this. But can I just convene and ask, um, when the Cabinet Secretary was before the, the Finance Committee on June the 4th, uh, he was asked how confident he was that the policy would commence in August. And I quote, I am entirely confident that we can do that. So I'm just really asking what's happened in two weeks where the Cabinet Secretary was entirely, entirely confident that he could deliver two weeks ago, and uh, two weeks later it's been postponed for three months. And can I just ask, has it anything to do with the, uh, the cost of the policy? Because COSLA's original estimates were 114, the government's estimate was 41, although that has gone up to 61. But there's still a difference of 50 million between the COSLA estimate and the government estimate. Is this the reason for the delay? No, there's, no, there's no delay, I and mean, I think I've made that very clear in my uh, opening remarks. And certainly it's been clear within the statement that was issued uh, last week between COSLA and the government, in which there is we are confident about the ability to work with local authorities to ensure we're doing what we can for two year olds from August and we're working towards an August implementation date. But it's about separating that date from the, the legal uh, requirement to do so because we wanted to work with local authorities in a supportive and positive way that we have been through the since the announcement to ensure that local authorities are supported around some of the areas in the margins where may, which may arise. So there is no um, diminution in the terms of our uh, ability and, and desire to implement this from August. But what we have done through the order amendment is to provide a transitionary flexibility for local authorities to cope with any issues around the margins, which they have uh, described to us may, may arise. So what you're saying is issues may arise, so issues have not arisen. So well, I, I'm, I'm trying to... 
Uh -huh. Well, I gave you an example there of one family potentially moving into another local authority, which might not have been accounted for by the local authority, but they would be under a legal duty to provide that if we kept the, the August date. But what we have now with the delayed amendment and delayed legal enforcement date is could provided local authorities with flexibility to allow them to cope with any unforeseen issues that may arise around the margins. And that's a direct response of us engaging with COSLA and reflecting within the, the order what they have told us that they felt uh, they required in order to allow us to deliver this in a, in a positive way for children across Scotland. I thought that families moving, families do that all the time. I would have thought that had been built into the plan, but I'll leave it there. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, the, um, the issue in relation to um, the, the, the reasons behind the, the delay in, in terms of the, the legal enforceability of the, uh, of the provision um, you've, you've set out. I, I think just following up um, Mary Scanlon's question, so to be clear, your expectation at this stage is that for um, uh, all two-year-olds that fall within the eligibility criteria in all local authorities uh, across the country, they, they will be accommodated from August. What we're talking about is, is perhaps cases of, of, of two-year-olds that may move uh, across local authorities um, between now and then and, and who are therefore not accounted for at this stage. What's oh, yeah, I mean, I'm using that as a for example of something mm. that might happen which might kind of skew some of the local authorities' original planning. But certainly what the joint statement last week from COSLA and the government showed is that we uh, are working hard to deliver this and want to work constructively with COSLA, but bearing in mind some of the, the marginal issues that they have suggested may arise uh, if we had the commencement, the legal enforcement date as the start of August, and that's why we've moved it to the 31st of October. Uh, so mo momentum continues apace to ensure that this is delivered from the August, but we're given that transitionary flexibility to local authorities to allow them to cope with the marginal issues that might arise. No, there's, there's not a local authority who's saying that even not across its entire um, jurisdiction, um, but only in certain areas, there are problems that will not be resolvable until the end of October. This is simply a, 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 an exercise in um, ensuring that over that transition period um, there will not be legal claims brought against councillors for... for um, issues that may arise in, in relation to individual Yeah, because people. we have to make, I mean, they have worked, local authorities have worked incredibly hard, along with government, to try and ensure that we're, we're on track for this. And we have a position now, a situation where all local authorities have in place plans to cater for the children that are, uh, that are, catered, that are co covered in this cohort that have, was announced in January. So it's about making sure that that, that um, work uh, and that hard work and that those endeavours by local authority are supported through this transition where issues may arise around the margins. And that's been the basis of the, the conversations that we've had with COSLA is how do we continue that supportive um, collaborative working to allow uh, and to ensure that uh, local authority is in the best place to deliver for, for children uh, in Scotland. But the expectation is that this will start from August and we will have that legal enforcement from, from, from October. I appreciate that and I, I, I fully recognise the work that's been going on um, in, in local authorities across the country. I know from, from the example in, in Orkney some of the challenges have been presented and, and I don't underestimate that for a, a second. I think the slightly unfortunate thing in the example that's been used about a two-year-old that's moving into a local authority area, as, as Mary Scanlon suggested, that conceivably is happening year round and therefore um, I suppose to get a better understanding of, of why that transition over the three months is required now but will not be required beyond then. Um, it would perhaps be helpful to have a, a, an indication of how those cases will be treated um, after the 31st of October where local authorities, I think, acting perfectly reasonably, um, may be slightly slow to pick up the entitlement of, of, of a two-year-old who's moved into the into the local authority area. So I, it, whether there are other examples that could be used that, that don't suggest that this is simply going to be a problem ongoing after 31st October would be helpful. Again, you know, I just use that as an illustrative example of some of, of an issue that may uh, mm. present itself for a local authority. There will be there will be others. There are areas that you have identified your own area, which is a, a rural authority as well, where numbers um, which numbers m numbers might be skewed because of a family potentially moving into an area. But sometimes these things are requiring of a bit of flexibility to allow uh, local authorities to test and develop their, their ability to cope with these things. And that's why we have that flex there for, for local authorities. But again, you know, I re reiterate, local authorities, COSLA and the government are committed to, to this being in place from August. This is just about uh, 
um, extending the, the legal um, enforcement of this by uh, those those additional months. So, sorry, final question, Governor. I, I mean, I don't know whether any other official wants to, to, to um, offer any suggestions in this regard, but that, from what you're saying, that three-month um, period is as much to uh, allow the policy to be road-tested in practice as it is about trying to deal with um, circumstances that, that may arise. Because the example you've used, is, as Mary Scanlon suggested, is, is going to be a, a, a factor um, year round from, from here on in and therefore it doesn't necessarily suge suggest um, a, 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 a kind of logical uh, rationale for delaying at this stage. Whereas over that three month period there may be things that arise with the best, wo best will in the world can't be anticipated now but gives a, a degree of, 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 of flexibility to amend the way in which it's uh, applied in its local authority area. To Susan, who's been engaging with local authorities as well, but it's important also to remember that you know for two-year-olds as well, with the the, um, the ratios that require that 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 additional uh, two-year-old could could skew things for a local authority. They're needing to then look for additional staff and others to, to cope with that that, um, that that new family that may move into the area. So there are kind of real uh, and practical difference difficulties at the margin. But Susan will be able to expand on some of the examples that you're requiring. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, we have worked really closely and consistently with COSLA and local authorities to, to work out what the challenges and the barriers might be and to, to provide support and to remove that. I think what we have um, shared with local authorities, we've got really good information on estimated numbers and we've got estimated numbers at ward level and local authorities will have an idea of like free school meal entitlement but I think um, one of the difficulties is, is location of the child because unlike primary school where you have your compulsory um, so you know your numbers and your catchment areas the system's a bit different um, so we're working through those issues with the new with working with the system that we've got so um you know it could be and it's also that the local authorities are working at, at a pace you know they're still going to be working hard over the next few months to to overcome um all those different issues that that, that they need to for implementation so i think that's why that would be one example not not just moving in to an area but maybe not quite knowing where those children are located because it's it's a system of self-referral so especially again say in a rural authority where you might have a child and you weren't quite sure um if that child was where the child was located um whether the parent was going to self-refer for for a place then there might be slight unknown locations and that's one of the complexities that all local authorities will have but um numbers will be much smaller in, in the rural authorities but the children might appear in in much more remote areas so um it it's just giving local authorities um it's just working through those issues as we go with local authorities i appreciate that additional information and and, and i think i understand why this is in place but but what you've described again the out of catchment the self-referral and all the rest of it um, the, the specific issues in, in, in rural um, local authorities like my own, I, all those I understand, but none of that is going to, 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 to change. And therefore, I, to some extent, there'll be questions as to, well, why, if you delay for three months here, um, it, are you not going to have problems with that, that legal requirement uh, on an ongoing ba basis? Because those, those factors just won't change over time. Well, well this is a... This has been a joint agreement with local authorities who are confident that this gives them that that, that additional flexibility to be able to, to cope with these marginal issues, to work through the ways in which they can cater for the children that may you know, arise that they hadn't uh, before had accounted for. So um, child community child minders, all these different options are there in place, these different options. And that's why we've got uh, Carol Kirk, who's working on a one-to-one -one basis with local authorities to, to help... Um, provide some options for, for local authorities and work through those options but local uh, government uh, is um, we're, we're comfortable with the 31st of October uh, as, a, as a date for the legal enforcement to come into place but again there's no delay it's just about removing that legal enforcement because from August this will be an entitlement that will be open for two-year-olds across Scotland. Can I just follow this up a little bit just for more clarity it seems to me um, that the the difference between the initial period and subsequent years is that 
effectively the flexibility, what COSLA are asking for, local authorities are asking for, if I'm, if I'm correct, is flexibility during the initial implementation phase, the setup phase. And the unknowns that Susan talked about, um, once you pass that phase, once you've got people who are applying, you then know roughly the numbers. So effectively beyond that, you know, it's a relatively stable position and people moving around and all that will just be treated in the, in the normal fashion. But in the, in the initial phase, phases, there are a number of unknowns in the implementation phase and, and that's why the flexibility is required. Is, that, am I, is my interpretation of what you're saying correct? I would, I, would, I would say, yeah, absolutely. It's a demand-less system, so there will be a, a degree there where you have to have that flexibility, which is what local authority have, have requested and which is why we've worked with them to uh, you know, delay the, the legal enforcement. It's important, again, it's that legal enforcement that's been delayed, not the, the willingness to uh, have this in place in August for two-year-olds who were uh, announced in the cohort at the start of the year. But it is just to deal with the unknowns at the start. Yeah, absolutely. And that, an ongoing, again, yeah. you know, I'll refer to the, the, the statement, which is about the, the, the margins of of practical issues that may arise. Okay, that, thank you for that, uh, Neil. One of, the, one of the concerns I think local authorities um, have been raising is uh, length of time for uh, the care inspectorate to take under, undertake uh, checks and inspections on any new facilities or any extensions that will uh, need to be uh, carried out. Will, um, will the care inspectorate be able to undertake all the necessary checks um, without diluting those checks before the, before the deadlines? Absolutely. The, the, the driver again for this is to make sure that what is provided for these uh, children in their crucial early years is of high quality. And certainly from um, our point of view, from government's point of view, and also from our agency's point of view, SSC, Care Inspector and others, we want to work together to ensure and enable local authorities to deliver uh, that high quality um, uh, provision that, that we all expect for our youngest children. So we're working to ensure that there's no impediment for, for local authorities to, to provide for the two-year-olds that we're wanting to cater for. There will be no shortcuts in terms of checks. It will be the standard checks in place. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, okay. Again, this is quality. Quality is what's driving this forward. Okay. And, and another concern that's been raised is, you know, obviously talking about new and extending facilities is about um, planning permission and the uh, lack of confirmed capital uh, revenue for individual local authorities. Um, authorities will uh, only have one or two planning cycles prior to October the 31st. It, can we be sure, Minister, that um, all planning requirements will be met in time for October 31st? Um, well, you know, some of that will be the, the local authorities at, at their discretion, but certainly from our point of view, again, we've been working with local authorities on, a, on an individual basis to identify any issues that, that may arise. And um, if there is a, an issue with planning, then you know they should be making sure that we or Carol Kirk understand that. Um, and maybe, Susan, do you want to add anything about Again, just to say in discussion with all local authorities, even in the last week or two and, and, and Carol over the last month or two, the most local authorities are already in discussions with their, their planning departments about what needs to be done over the summer because they're already planning because, you know, obviously over the summer when buildings are empty is their best time to do that. So they're already in discussion with their planning departments. So we can be assured that, that that will not be an issue come the 31st of October? Well, we also know as well that this, this provision is for the discussions we're having around some of the finances for this as well as over the two years to cater for the, the, the additional tranche of children who will come and stream next again year as well. So there are uh, immediate and short term issues that councils will have to um, uh, try and, and resolve. But we know from the from our work with local authorities, every local authority has in place plans for the children that are uh, will be entitled to this new provision. But of course, there'll be other issues that they'll have to, to deal with and contend with over the, the course of the two years, which will see the uh, the 27% of local uh, of two-year-olds being uh, on stream from, from August next year. So if the, an expansion this year and a planned expansion next year, as you, as you mentioned, um, so for, from a financial sense and also from a practical sense of, of providing any new or extended uh, facilities, do you, do you not think that, that uh, local authorities should have the capital funds required for um, that further expansion? They, they, they currently they won't get that until 2015-16. So if you're planning an expansion this year and next year, should local authorities not have that money just now to plan properly for the two, rather than a piecemeal approach, bit of money here this year, bit of money next year, 
so they can properly implement this this expansion over the two year period. Well, we're currently engaged with COSLA about the, the capital costs as well. We've um, we've already invested you know significantly on in this provision. That's to over over a quarter of a billion pounds has gone on to this, and then there's the, of course, the remaining discussions around the capital costs. Uh, um, so we're working with uh, COSLA, taking on board some of the points that they have raised, come to a robust uh, position on this uh, on the 61 million as the capital cost uh, figure, uh, and working hard with local authorities to to ensure that we get to a point where we can uh, agree that that money mm -hmm. and and get. Get get going, but you know I think it's also important to recognise that the, the negotiations around the capital costs haven't stopped work on the ground to ensure that we're in a position to deliver this from August. Um, in terms of the eligibility criteria, um, there has been you know obviously some uh, difficulties I think in terms of of, of um, working out who is eligible and um, or certain te teething problems in that regard. Can I ask? Um, how, how will providers be expected to differentiate between families receiving the contributory job seekers allowance given for the first six months, regardless of family income, and the income-based job seekers allowance, uh, which is long-term and based on household income? Susan, would you like to continue? Yeah, um, th that issue um, currently exists in terms of free school meal entitlement. So local authorities will already be dealing with um, how they assess the qualifying benefits for free school meals. So presumably they would be using the same system that they use for that because free school meals doesn't include contributory benefits. Um, I think this is also something that we can do a bit more work with um, around with, with DWP just to um, help advise local authorities how they can um, check out the, the, the evidence of the qualifying criteria. Um, so that's stuff that we'll continue to work on. But local authorities already do that as a matter of course for free school meals, um, which follows this, some of the same benefits. Um, obviously, the, there, are, there are some complexities to this. And um, I mean, in terms of administering that, and I know you say that the checks are taking place for free school meals, but obviously we're talking about two-year-olds here, so it's obviously uh, a different set of children. It's more children. Um, will, will, what kind of resource support will local authorities get to administer this? Will, will the Scottish Government be given extra funds to help with that, that process? The, the revenue allocations always included an element of central support costs and a local, some local authorities have employed new managers or even know of one that's a, a sort of family support worker just to deal with all these issues in their entirety. So that's a matter for local authorities, um, how they want to deal with that on an administrative basis. The revenue covers that and we're in close enough communication with all the, the key agencies to ask what further support advice is needed, and we, we, we're in a position to, to give that as well. Jane Baxter. Thank you, Convener. Um, so are we saying that families who present as being eligible um, in August will get a place, because it sounds as if it's just sort of oversights of families that are perhaps relocated or we're not too sure where they live, that, that, are, that, that this October deferment is about that. So. Is every other child going to get a place in August? It's about delaying the legal enforcement. Yep. So that's where the, the legal enforcement comes in on the 31st of October, but there is um, continued a pace to ensure we're in a place to deliver for uh, two-year-olds from, from August. And the statement last week shows that every local authority has in place plans to deliver. August? From August, yeah. So there, there won't be the circumstance where an eligible family presents themselves in August and are told to come back in October by the deadline? Well, again, it's going back to the place position where we're, we're delaying the legal enforcement. So if um, local authorities have within their, their gift, you know, the numbers that we've, we've worked through, taken on board the, the issues from DWP and others, and have plans in place is about making sure we're, we're able to deliver for the two-year-olds that, 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 that we want to from August. But the delay is for the legal enforcement, so it's about giving them that transitionary flexibility to, to deal with any issues that may, uh, may arise. Susan, do you want to... I, don't, I don't see, from talking to local authorities, I don't see any local authorities turning away children. If there was an exceptional case or an odd case where they were having difficulties anticipating that place or anticipate, uh, difficulties making that placement, um, 
I don't see them turning the child away and saying come back on the 31st. They work very, very actively with that, that parent to identify a place and a place that's appropriate. So authorities are struggling to accommodate the children that are currently eligible and these are additional children coming into the system and I just can envisage based on my experience of, of knowing people that are in these situations that, that, that families are going to be asked to come back come, come back when, when we're near the trigger point for the legal requirement. Are they, are they going to get a place in August? But no local authority has, has suggested that they are not doing all that they can and working very hard uh, to ensure that children are, are going to be catered for from August. Again, this is going back to helping local authorities with the transitionary flexibility that they say they need uh, by delaying the legal enforcement. But there's no delay in the policy uh, intention. Indeed, you know, local authorities in COSLA have said you know, that very much they're, they're, they're working hard, as hard as they can to deliver on, on this in a, in, a, in a manageable way and is ensuring, ensuring quality. I very much hope that translates into places for eligible children in, in August and I look forward to seeing And again, that's why you know, Carol, that Kirk, Carol Kirk is there working uh, with local authorities to troubleshoot to make sure that there are innovative ways in which we can, we can approach this. You know, we've got community childminders, other ways in which local authorities are, are using uh, their local resource to, uh, to cater for the two-year-olds that we want to, to deliver for. So, you know, local authorities are, are, have got the, the bit between their teeth and they want to deliver this. They agree that this policy is right and they, they, they agree that they, they, they want to do all they can for, for, for two-year-olds who have come on stream uh, from January. But this is about the delay in the legal enforcement as opposed to any delay in the, the policy intention behind this. To ask for an early report about this implementation. I know it hasn't happened yet, but you know, we could build it into a programme just to find out how, how this we'll is. Have that. I'm sure we'll have that discussion as yeah. part of our work programme. Yeah. But, uh, Thanks. I, I get the point. Um, uh, supplementary from Liz Smith on this. Just on this point, uh, Minister, can we be absolutely clear about this? Uh, Susan Bolt, uh, in an earlier answer uh, to Mary Scanlon, said that she was confident that there was good data between the Scottish Government and COSLA uh, about the numbers. Uh, involved in this. Now, it's very clear that there is a cohort of 3,440. You must have some estimate of the numbers in August, given the policy intention, and I understand the point you're making about the legal requirement, but you must have an estimate of the numbers who will be provided with their place in August. Can I ask what mathematical modelling has been done for that? We've been working hard with local authorities to identify the numbers. We've got the 3,400, which will be the two. How, how and, many of these? And also, this is a self-referral, demand-led approach as well. So there will be a degree of uh, um, flexibility. But there. Can, I, can I just ask about the numbers? I mean, this is, this is a flagship policy, uh -huh. right, which th there is <clears throat> very considerable uh, political support for. And, of course, there's very uh, considerable support amongst parents. It's a flagship policy for the Scottish Government. Mm -hmm. How many places will be guaranteed uh, in August? Well, we have in prov provision there for 3,400 uh, children who will become on stream. Plus, there's the additional two-year-olds who are looked after within the, the body of the Act as well. So there'll be around 4,000 uh, two-year-olds um, who will be catered for within the, 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 within the and Act. That, Minister, but and that, Minister. In, in terms place. of the 3,440, how and many of these places... And has plans in place. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Claire Adamson. Um, uh, thank you, Minister. I um, appreciate what you said about um, cause on you being absolutely committed to this being a manageable, sustainable and high quality delivery. Um, obviously, um, there'll be, there will be a significant amount of capital change to, to, you know, to accommodate capacity and things. And because of the, the nature of education, that's going to be done over the summer holidays. So we have some... Um, uh, any idea how, co how prepared the local authorities are and how confident they are that that capital work can be completed on time? Again, going back to the, the questions earlier, we are in continual dialogue with local authorities around the capital costs and you know, we've come to uh, our position, which we believe is, is robust and fair, which is the £61 million. Um, We're continuing that dialogue with local authorities, but again, every local authority has in place plans to, to do uh, what they can over the next... Uh, three, two months uh, until the, 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 the policy comes in force uh, and to ensure that they're in a, billet, in, in a position where they can deliver on this. So local authorities uh, will have different, varying different issues that they'll have to contend with. But again, you know, we're engaging with local authorities on an individual basis, both at a government level and also through the recent appointment of Carol Kirk to ensure that we can uh, help and support local authorities where, where they need that support and additional uh, help. 
Can I just uh, ask this question? Uh, is it not the case that we're working with local uh, authority colleagues to ensure that August is still the start date? It's still the start date. Absolutely. This is purely just uh, for the, the legal requirements as well, and it's working in coalition with our colleagues in COSLA. Absolutely. That's, that's exactly the, the, the reason why there has been this uh, delay in legal uh, enforcement, um, but no delay in the momentum to ensure that this is in place from, from August. Uh, and that's what local authorities want to do. They believe in this, this policy as well. Our discussions with COSLA have, have shown that they, that they want to do what they can for these children as well. And that was you know, the, 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 the ethos behind the statement last week, which uh, showed uh, local government's support for this policy. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, I'll get a final question from you. From could, I, could, could I ask at what stage uh, there was a recognition by the Scottish Government that there would have to be an amended SSI and that the legal requirement uh, would have to be changed from August uh, to October? Been in continual dialogue from lo with local authorities from January since the announcement of the of the uh, policy, and um, I, you know we we've been working very hard to try and find ways in which we can uh, resolve some of the issues that local authorities have have um, have described that they may face additional challenges. And so, what we've done now is you know, albeit you know the the, the timing uh, is. It is, it has been short in terms of the ability of the committees to, to cope with this, but we're grateful for that. But this has been as a result of continual dialogue and positive dialogue with local authorities to resolve some of the challenges that they say they may face in the margins. And what is driving this is to make sure that we have in place a policy which is delivering for children and young people across the, across the country. Okay. Uh, at what stage did the uh, Minister and Cabinet Secretary decide that there had to be a change to the... Um, proposed legislation. We indicated to the committee uh, by letter. The committee, the committee received a letter last week from mm -hmm. uh, the Cabinet Secretary. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you very much. Uh, we uh, want to move on to item two. Item two is the formal debate on the instrument. Um, can, and I invite the Minister to speak to and move the motion. I'm formally moved. Do I have to move? Do I have to move? Sorry. <laughs> um, I move the, that the Education and Culture Committee recommends that the provision of the Early Learning and Child Care Specified Children Scotland Order 2014 draft be approved. Thank you very much, Minister. Can, does any member wish to contribute to this stage to the debate? No? OK. Can I therefore... Um, well, I, I wouldn't invite the Minister to make any further remarks. I presume you don't have any. No, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. Can OK. Therefore, I want to put the question to the committee that uh, motion S4M 10413 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? We're agreed. Uh, thank you very much. The committee's report to the Parliament and the instrument will confirm the outcome of the debate. Uh, and can I thank the Minister and officials for attending the session. Uh, that concludes our business today and I close the meeting.